um cyber truck right just going um, another soliloquy about the cyber truck i know everyone's been flooding our youtube channels with the cyber truck news but i think the sometimes on youtube there can be a tendency to kind of um you know hype things and to kind of get a bit fanboy over things that don't really make any sense or some other people there can be a trend to like kind of hop onto trends or hop onto like themes or talking points and just kind of talk them under into the ground and then you're like as a viewer you're like what the hell doesn't make any sense who cares but the cyber truck just kind of you know having having kind of uh thought about it a bit more and kind of really kind of taken in all the content out there and read some of the reports and seen gay's reaction on social it really is a once in a lifetime thing and it and it kind of and it could be to automotive design what the iphone was to smartphones it could be that important in terms of suddenly just like changing the way we think about um cars and what we what, what we should expect from our um motor company because i think as much as people like to diss um steve jobs and say you know he wasn't that relevant and he wasn't actually the ones making the actual iphone i think of bilbo has a real famous joke about it right i think on conan where he says oh he thinks steve jobs was overrated right because essentially he just you know drove his employees to the brink of insanity in order to kind of make the phones but he wasn't the one actually making them himself fair enough but i think in most techno in most technological most technological fields you always need a lightning rod. You need a figurehead who kind of wants to push things to an extent where, you know, the everyday person or average person on the street would be like, that doesn't make any sense. Because sometimes I think the things that doesn't make any sense is the one that actually makes the most sense in the long run. And it's the kind of thing that other companies or other people can sort of build upon. Because I think even if the iPhone didn't work out, imagine the iPhone ended up being, uh, I don't know, Sony Ericsson and it just didn't take off. I think the iPhone was still as a design print or as a design proposition, um, as something to expect from a from a smartphone developer or smartphone manufacturer. Story, it still would have been the source of much in inspiration for other companies coming forward. Because I think of sci-fi movies, I think of um, yeah, mostly sci-fi movies. Whenever you watch sci-fi movies, even from the eighties or seventies, you do always see them carrying some kind of telecommunication device that looks similar to an iPhone, right? Like a flat kind of mostly glass. Sometimes it'd be see-through touchscreen device that you could like you know i don't know analyze um, the surface of the moon with or you know take samples of you could zoom whatever there was something that it kind of had the same sort of form factor so when we saw the iphone what i think it did for a lot of manufacturers out there it finally gave them permission because i think a lot of people are like that even you know myself i kind of think i'm supremely confident in some ways but in other ways i'm probably a little bit scared of things i think it gave um manufacturers the permission to be like oh all these phones that we make, all these phones that we get um, kids to kind of design in design contests or we get our design studios to mock up prototypes, we can actually make them in real life. And it pushes you a bit further because, you know, essentially the, this form factor changed the way chips were developed in in, in a life, in well, smartphones, the way batteries were developed. Like it changed everything. This whole circuit board of the phone has changed because if you remember Nokia from back in the day, or just TVs at, at forever, they always had a brain, you know, everything you had, a te te technological device you had always had some kind of bump that housed all the electronics. And somehow with the iPhone, you suddenly had to shrink it, you know, bit by bit with every generation, it just got slimmer and slimmer and slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. So I think as much as ugly as the Cybertruck may be to some people, I think it's finally shifted everyone's consciousness or sense of expectation. So now, even if you're not a big Tesla fan, you're going to demand more from Ford, Porsche, Mercedes, BMW, Toyota, Hyundai, wherever they may be. All those amazing show, all those amazing cars they show you at the, you know, those trade, those automobile, automobile, um, was it exhibitions or trade shows? I think they're called, right? I went to one at XL building once. So that was really cool. Um, automobile, uh, auto, let's see, auto concept cars. Was it? Concept, let's just write in concept cars concept cars trade show let's see what we see because i do remember there just being so many i think um mercedes is actually the one that's maybe the most annoying they usually have amazing concept cars but by the time they come on the road they look so generic it's just unreal how generic they they end up looking so this is a good example of one right i think this is this, this is just a render though uh this is the eight concept cars you want to see in the showroom very soon right this is from world world industries let's get this up here Put it here, here, put this on the screen. So there's eight concept cars, right? Number one, look at the, look, look, look how beautiful that looks. 
So number two, concept cars are cool, but what's the use if you can't head over to a dealership and drive one, right? So the first one, they said it would look really cool, is this. An Audi Sport Quattro 2015 release date. Audi unveiled its Sports Quattro concept at the Frankfurt Motor Show, taking inspiration from the Quattro concept that debuted at the 210 uh, Paris Motor Show. Both cars draw upon the company's legendary 1980 your quattro but this concept car appears to be more production minded than the 2010 version okay that that's not too outlandish this this audi it looks pretty it looks like something you'd make see on the road i love the rims that front grille looks mean as fuck but let's continue this is probably a more concept and this is again something that you'd want to see on the road a ford s max why can't they just make that it's a Ford S Max 2014 release date is a 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine powers the S Max concept. This estimates starting car offers drives about 178 horsepower and 177 feet of torque. Although Ford would prefer you to don't call it a minivan, it sure does look like one. The S Max concept can seat seven passengers comfortably with extra room for luggage. The car is also loaded with all the Ford's latest info. Um, in Fontaine technology, including My Ford Touch and Sync. But again, just taking a quick look at the cars, right? Apart from maybe this Jaguar CX-17, they all look fairly standard. Nothing really too crazy about them. Just your, your standard. Something like this is something you'd want to see on the road, right? This smart for joy. A Mercedes-Benz owned city car brand uh, plans to unveil a smart car in 2014. Although the Ford Joy doesn't have a roof, the tailgate or doors, the car does feature smart signature, uh, tried and sell. You can expect the car to be a uh, uh, some forever long. So this, I'm not too sure if it would be road legal. I'm not sure what the rules are about having a door and a, a, a roof on the car. But still, just as a concept or just as something maybe to sell even to like Pacific markets, maybe be sunnier climates where maybe you won't be exposed to elements as much. Great. But we don't see it. And we just see the same form factor, the same old iterations of cars again and again and again. So I think even if you're not a big fan of Tesla, just seeing this on the street, as someone posted us on Reddit earlier, it's a little video of, of, a, of a Tesla Cybertruck probably having a couple of tests, I reckon, because it's being flanked by loads of other Teslas. So I'm assuming some sort of test run. But just look how, how, look how mean this looks on the streets. And imagine what this is going to look like once everyone gets their own... Um, once everyone gets their own model in their driveway, how weird this is going to look all over the place. It just looks amazing. Look at that. What the heck? And I think that's the expectation oh, level that we're going to be expecting. So if Ford come out or if Mercedes come out with just some basic ass car, you're not going to have it. You're not going to be as um, receptive to it anymore. And I think that's what essentially it's done. So it's just a really clever branding trick or a really clever branding um, exercise because number one you've created something that's very divisive that generates loads of content free content for, for the most part you haven't paid for one bit of marketing similar to something that you know supreme would have done but in years gone by and um essentially you've also built something objectively that's quite ugly but it's also um questioned it's also made people question why their favorite car brand isn't able to produce concept cars isn't able to manufacture them for the general public it's crazy, isn't it? It's, it's such a weird thing to see. Only such an amazing thing to see. I honestly can't wait to see what they look like when they're all careering down the street. Again, I'm not too sure. I think um, there was a. Do you remember there was an era where everyone was driving white cars? For instance, everyone wanted their car to be white. I'm not sure what that trend was. I'm not really a fan of white cars, but it would be nice to maybe see a bit more variation in terms of the actual finishes. Although I'm a big fan of the stainless steel look, it would be a bit weird. It'd be a bit dystopian to see everybody driving around in you know these um, stainless steel trucks. Uh, that being said. When I say everyone, maybe that that's what it will be, you know. It, even though it's a pickup truck, it might just end up being one of the most popular SUVs. Because there is a trend, especially nowadays, with people driving Porsche trucks, Lamborghini trucks, BMW trucks, like or SUV type um, vehicles, uh, similar to like that. Is it X5 or X6 or whatever that car is that everyone drives? Um, and that Lamborghini that all rappers have, and a few people around my area have it too, especially some of the Asian boys, they love that car. Um, so that, that might be a thing. Right, it's like, it's this idea that because I always picture those cars just being a truck version of a luxury sports car. So it's like you you get the benefit of driving like a Porsche Boxster, but with a bigger sort of body. I always get that kind of feeling, or like a 911. If you're if you're a dude, right, you probably you probably don't. Maybe a 911 is a bit too. I don't know. It probably isn't the most uh, easy car to drive every day, or maybe a lot of people do argue against that. So maybe you, that's why you buy a Jeep. But I don't know. Man. I just see what it looks like. I really would do, but. Just thinking about it, I can't actually get it out of my mind. Actually, I haven't seen it to the presentation. It's one of those things that just sticks in your head. You're like, Jesus, did I see that? Was that real? Yes, it was. And if you watch the whole presentation, I think it's like 40 minutes. 
usually Elon is rambling and ranting about whatever it is, whatever it may be. But this time around, he just came out, gave a short little introduction and boom, he just rolled it out. Because he knew, you know, there's not much you can say when you just have that thing on, on the stage. Because I'm pretty sure he, he knew he was onto something when he started um, sending the design around the office. Letting everyone know, hey guys, what do you think of this car? And everyone's already up. It's probably like, this is probably ugly. Like, proper split opinion. And so I guess you knew, you know straight away you're onto a winner when you do that. So, yeah, big up those guys. And I think the pre-orders keep going up and up. Last I checked on Elon Musk's Twitter, I think he said they're up to two, 250,000. Um, uh, dip, what would you call it? Reservations so far. Of course, they're only $100. So I think there'll be a lot of people who will probably end up flaking as per, you know, as per the whole Facebook events uh, ratio. Just because you have a thousand people attending on your Facebook event, you'll probably only get 10% of those turning up, if that. So, you know, we shouldn't take that number as gospel, but still, 250,000 people putting down $100 each before the car's been even produced. Sick. 